Biphenyl is a pleasant smelling, aromatic hydrocarbon which finds wide use as a building block in organic chemistry. In the laboratory, it can be made by the coupling of phenyl magnesium bromide with copper 2 chloride, as seen in this procedure from Hubenweil. Here are the reagents needed for this preparation. Of note is the anhydrous copper 2 chloride, which was prepared the day before and stored in a vacuum desiccator to prevent the absorption of moisture. To get started, we first have to prepare a phenyl magnesium bromide solution. So, 4.8 grams of magnesium metal granules were added to a 500 milliliter flask. This was followed up by the addition of 200 ml of sodium dried diethyl ether. And here's the whole setup for the preparation of the Grignard reagent. And note the calcium chloride drying tube which prevents the ingress of atmospheric moisture which would otherwise destroy our phenyl magnesium bromide. The addition funnel was charged with 31.4 grams of bromobenzene. Then, a few mils of the bromobenzene was allowed to run into the flask to begin the formation of our Grignard reagent. The reaction still hadn't started after a few minutes, so I added a single small crystal of iodine down the condenser. The iodine should react with the magnesium oxide coating on the surface of the magnesium, exposing a fresh surface of magnesium metal for the bromobenzene to react at. Eventually, the yellow coloration from the iodine faded, and a cloudiness appeared, which indicates the start of the reaction. Shortly after, a tan coloration appeared in the solution, and it began to reflux spontaneously. After the initial exotherm had died down, the dropwise addition of bromobenzene was started at such a rate as to maintain the reaction at a good reflux. Once the bromobenzene solution had been completely added, the mixture was refluxed for one hour, after which the magnesium had been near completely consumed. Then, the flask was placed in an ice bath and allowed to cool. The anhydrous copper 2 chloride was then added into the phenyl magnesium bromide solution, producing an unexpectedly vigorous reaction. So if you repeat this, definitely add it portion-wise and not all at once, but luckily we only lost a few milliliters of our solution. The funnel was then swapped out for a condenser, and the mixture was refluxed for one hour. Over time, the coloration of the solution changed from a dark green to a brown, with the formation of a thick deposit at the bottom of the flask. The flask was then cooled in an ice bath, and the solid mass at the bottom of the flask was broken up with a spatula and by stoppering and shaking the flask. The reaction was quenched in a mixture of 100 grams of ice and 100 grams of water, then concentrated hydrochloric acid was added until the solids were completely dissolved. The solution was transferred into a separatory funnel, and the lower aqueous phase was drained off. Then the organic phase was washed with an equal volume of hydrochloric acid, then concentrated ammonia, and finally water. The organic phase was drained off into an Erlenmeyer flask, and then dried over an hydrous calcium chloride for about one hour. The solution was then decanted off and filtered, and then the ether was removed by simple distillation. After the rate of distillation slowed, the residual ether was stripped off under vacuum. This left us with 10.1 grams of very crude biphenyl, representing a 70% yield. The paper reported a 90% crude yield, and I have some ideas on why our yield might be lower, which I'll talk about later on. The biphenyl was recrystallized from methanol and water, and activated charcoal was added to decolorize the solution. It was then hot filtered and allowed to slowly cool down to room temperature, and then placed in the freezer to cool overnight. The biphenyl was then vacuum filtered off and dried in a vacuum desiccator with calcium chloride overnight. The melting point of the biphenyl was found to be 67.3 degrees Celsius at a heating rate of 1 degree Celsius per minute. 
compared to the theoretical melting point of 69.2 degrees Celsius, this is an acceptable melting point and demonstrates that biphenyl has been successfully synthesized. Unfortunately, the product was deceivingly fluffy and only 4.5 grams of biphenyl was recovered, representing a 31% yield, which is a 40% reduction from our crude yield before the recrystallization. So I figured that there was still a significant amount of product stuck in the filtrate, so I boiled it down and let it crystallize out again. But only another 0.5 grams of biphenyl was recovered of an inferior melting point of 64.4 degrees Celsius. It's quite possible that the crude biphenyl had a significant percentage of impurities leading to a low recovery on the recrystallization. So we need to think of some other reasons on why this yield was suffering. Now we can look at the most obvious mistake which was the rapid addition of the copper 2 chloride leading to the exotherm that splashed some of our product out of the flask. However, it seemed that only a few mils of the solution escaped, so this should only be a single digit loss of yield at most. The main determiner of yield is likely the purity of the anhydrous copper 2 chloride. Any residual moisture will destroy the phenyl magnesium bromide, leading to a significant reduction in yield. Also, the handling time in air needs to be minimized as it is very hygroscopic and will fairly quickly turn back into the dihydrate. Also, care needs to be taken when drying the copper chloride dihydrate, as excessive heating will lead to the formation of copper oxychlorides and hydroxychlorides, which can also destroy the phenyl magnesium bromide, as well as throw off your stoichiometry. And as a final note, this solid mass at the bottom of the flask may be trapping some of our copper 2 chloride, preventing it from reacting. Perhaps using a mechanical stirrer could prevent the formation of this mass, allowing for a complete reaction to take place. But, despite the poor yield, I still got enough biphenyl to proceed with the next step of my planned synthesis, which hopefully you'll see in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.